question. It's about trendiness. And interesting enough, when we did um, some research for one of the big utility companies about marketing their green tariff, what we found out consumers were saying was, yeah, I love it, I think it's a great idea and all that, but it isn't going to cost me any more money, but I want my neighbours to know I've signed up for it. It's very important that the Joneses next door know that I've now gone green. And this is really important, this idea of badging. Very, very important for them. And if they weren't going to, if they couldn't see any benefit from their image, they weren't interested. I'll talk about green thing. Informed consumers, this is a, very similar to the other group earlier, but what is different? These people are very rational. This is, yeah, a lot of people I find in the green field ethics are very emotional. There's a group of people out there who are coldly rational. And I meet them at certain parties, and they're like professors, and sometimes journalists. And you know what? They've just put all the facts together and go, God, we're in a deep hole here, guys. We really need to sort this out. They're seeing this as very much. They'll give you the figures. If we don't do something soon, we're screwed. You know? So they're very, very informed, and boy, do they know their stuff. Don't ever pick an argument with them, because they'll beat you to death with facts and figures. I was at one party, and we were talking about, you know, it's one of those things where you had to be really careful about what you talk about. So we're talking about grow your own. I was saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got a little plot where I grow my own stuff. I said, I grow Jerusalem artichokes. Jerusalem artichokes? Devil's food. I go, what's wrong with Jerusalem artichokes? He goes, yeah. He says, he says, well, don't you know? I said, well, no. You know, they've got these beautiful sunflowers that come out because they're part of sunflower. They're really tasty with a bit of butter. He says, yeah, well, it's, you know, it's that. I need that. He says, it's the fart. It makes you fart. No, it doesn't. I said, well, yes, it does. And that and beans. And he said, I've given up beans. I've given up this. Oh, this stuff he's given up. And then he then went on about cows and methane and got all his facts wrong on that. But anyway, you know, these people are very informed. They, they reel off their facts. Um, but anyway, I don't know what the guy eats. I think he must drink water. <laughs> yeah. Get used to it. We all fart. Yeah. Um, this is one of the most interesting sets, uh, which I first came across in America, actually, is the suburban offsetters. And if you see, offsetting is really what a lot of companies are doing. I describe in the book, actually, it's a bit like uh, Manson going out and killing 12 people, but then making uh, um, 13 women pregnant and going, look, I'm one up. <laughs> you know, it's the same thing, isn't it? All companies, you know, I'll fly an aeroplane and plant a tree. Yeah, whoopee. You know, and I think consumers are getting cynical about offsetting, but you know what? It's a really big deal because go back to religion. What did we do in the old days, 300 years ago? Went to church, did our penance, pff, offset my sin, haven't I? Yeah, that's okay, vicar. I did this. I shagged my neighbor's wife. Okay, say three Hail Marys, good job done. Right. That is, this is the modern day equivalent, isn't it? You know, we, we offset, we do it in lots of parts of our life. It's a very interesting thing of psychology. And these people want to live a life. Um, they don't want to actually downgrade life. They don't want to ride to work. They don't want to give up the holiday. They don't want to even give up a lot of things. What they want is they want to have the slightly greener option. And they want to be seen to be greener. So they will turn up to the Whole Foods in a 4x4 four four and load it up with organic and fair trade products and go home and go, look, at me and they'll build a windmill or wind turbine in the garden you know they'll do all those kind of token things they'll sign up to a green tariff and make sure everyone knows about it you know that is their lifestyle it's not a bad thing it's not a bad thing at all because they're just saying we don't have to live like a bunch of hippies in, in a camp you know we can have a normal lifestyle we just need to be more conscientious about what we do and although for them it's a bit of a middle class trendy thing and, and to be honest a lot of the thing we're finding is very middle class this whole thing about sustainability and green then we have people in community this is the type of often they overlooked because community is really massive. I did some work with the uh, Bureau of Statistics who feed the government's figures. I'm this guy there who, very interesting in the studies I found about how community is growing and growing and how we're wanting more for community, which is one of the reasons we like local. It's also a sense of what is community. It's really important to understand that we start from community. We start from me, my family, my friends, my bigger family, and then my community. And that's really big. And that's where your point of caring really starts. It's only when you spread out bigger do you start to get into the bigger issues of planetary issues, which often people believe are so big that it needs to be someone else's responsibility. We'll share it, but we still feel we're not going to be solely responsible. This is a bit like the local hospice coming to you and saying, would you do a bike ride for the weekend? You go, yeah, of course I would, you know, help my local hospice. Now, if the government came to you and said, do you a bike ride for the NHS? You go, what? That's your job. That's why you're there. And it's that same kind of mentality we're finding. People take local responsibility, but when it comes to something really big, that kind of responsibility is being really stretched by them. And so communities have got enormous growth in religion as well in this country. We don't seem to realise that people are going back to religions. And I don't just talk about traditional religions, but new religions, faiths and other beliefs and stuff like that. None of them I know have become Buddhists in the last couple of years. It's unbelievable. Or maybe I just drive them that way. 
um, health and body conscious have always been there, but it kind of overlaps into this whole field of ethics. Obviously, body and these people are very big to obviously FMCG, but not. You might say, are they ethical or not? But the point is, they don't want to put crap in their body, right? They don't want additives. We found out. We just done a big research for a big dairy company, and we found out consumers so did not want artificial anything. They really did not like the fact that, that so many brands lie. You know, less fat, but they put more sugar in. Or there's additives. They want it pure. They want it natural. And that's even the ordinary types. Now, I'm not talking about this even health and body conscious. Ordinary people don't want shit in their food, basically. They want it to be healthy, and they want it to be good. Um, but then there's another group who aren't green at all. It's red. If you look at the red card, um, although it was criticised actually in the beginning for being a flop, I don't think it was actually. It's been very successful. Amex have won over a completely new bunch of consumers they never got before, thanks to the red card. However, I did slam that advertising as the most patronising load of crap I've ever seen in my life. I mean, what is all that about? You know, you're meant to be helping people in Africa and you're just trivialising them. It's just a joke. But you know, the product has been successful and it is introducing people into another area, which is about helping people with HIV. And enormous growth in many of these other areas, like African Water Projects as well, being very big as well in people's concern with the planet. Now, interesting enough, when I was at a talk about two years ago, actually, at the food fair, I think it was Maury was doing the talk, the guy was saying, actually, there's this group of people, um, there's the ethical intent of people who love to be, but they really can't afford to, like nurses and students and other people, or the lifestyle doesn't allow, but they really would like to be more ethical. But more important, it's this group that the guy said, well, I can only really give them one title, and that's slobs. Right, which is a nice term, I think, really. These people, they don't care about themselves, let alone others, or the planet. You know, they feed their kids, fill a lot of fattening food, they feed themselves, they watch TV and eat pizza. You've seen the comedy program, you know. Um, and they like football fags, and, and they'll all be in the pubs on Friday, you know, cheering along England. Um, they have few values like that. Though, interesting enough, community is quite big on them. But they don't care about food. They don't care about stuffing Walker crisps down you. You know, they don't care about putting rubbish in their kids. You know, they give them pizza and lots of stuff. They go to Iceland and buy all that rubbish that's loaded with, you know, not even real meat and stuff. So, and they go on holiday at Butlins. I've added that. If you've ever been to Butlins, there's a lot of them there. It's a horrible place. <laughs> if, any, if Butlins ever asked you to pitch, just don't agree to go and spend 24 hours there. It was the most horrendous experience. There are these lovely pictures of smiley people all looking healthy. When you get there, it's all fat people like this. Going, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> all with white vans parked in the front. <laughs> so, different experience. I actually went into the shop and said, have you got a copy of the Financial Times? And a woman looked at me and said, what's that? <laughs> oh, well, my league. We almost got thrown out, actually. But... Um, interesting, I don't know if people come through this actually um, by Fraser Consultancy, but it's a really interesting study into looking at how people react to brand reputation. And Karen does this every year, it's Karen Fraser. I really recommend you look at it because it looks at what the values that are people doing. And also what is interesting, how values are changing, for example. Yeah, honesty and trust is really key. We all know if you work in the world of brand, trust is the number one thing. If they don't trust you, you're screwed, right? And what happens when a brand screws up on trust? Look what Pampers have just done. Whoa. You know, it lost trust with an enormous number of consumers by putting a new new version of the nappy in the bag and not even telling people. And it's only when they got to the bottom and they discovered a note saying, congratulations, you just tried out a new nappy. Unfortunately, the nappy resulted in lots of babies having burns and nasty red bits and, you know, and leaked. So they destroyed trust with an enormous number of consumers. Um, yeah, so trust and honesty is really important. People want to believe. Health is very important. You know, people care about the health of the nation themselves. Supply chain, they, they're interested in how people are treated. You know, a company that abuses people is not going to go down well, no matter how many trees it's planting. Data is a new one. People are actually concerned about the ethics of data. We've got all my data, how are you using it? Are you abusing it? And environmental issues, yes. And ethos, really important. I think it was said earlier, I think by Dave. You've got to start with the ethos. You can done any campaign you like saying I'm green and caring, but if your ethos isn't behind it, it won't happen. You know, it's very, very important that. Ethos is absolutely essential. What consumer is key into that brand managers seem to miss is ethos. Body Shop was trusted and believed because the ethos was driven by its leader, Anita Roddick, who people believed and trusted. What happened when L'Oreal took it over? 
Boom, trust went down. What happened when Nestle, who owned L'Oreal, put in chemicals that were tested on animals? You know, well, the response to that was, well, there's no big surprise there, is there? You know, it's Nestle by L'Oreal. You're going to get people thinking, well, we don't trust them. So trust is really important. That's absolutely key. And so you've got to start with the ethos. So the ethos isn't there. You're largely wasting your time. I think the head of Eon said, why is everyone trying to be green in the utilities market? We're not green. Therefore, why don't we just be honest?